Welcome! I put this tutorial together for users who are new to Quicken 2015. For simplicity, I assume you've either already imported an older Quicken file or you've downloaded transactions from your bank. For this example, I'm actually using a dummy test file. The first thing you might notice is that the program now has a much more modern Mac look and feel. Everything is also contained in a single window, which makes things a lot easier to work with. Let's start up top. In the title bar, you'll see the name of your actual file. Here's a tip. You can hold down the command key and click on the file name and you can see the path to where your file actually resides. You'll want to keep all your accounts within this single file and for that reason most people are not going to need more than one file. There are times such as if you want to keep your business finances separate from your personal finances or if you have various family members that need to track their finances separately from your finances. Now let's move over to the sidebar. If you notice, all your accounts will be listed here at the upper left and will be broken up depending on what account type they are. You may have cash accounts, savings accounts, credit card accounts, or investment accounts. Many of these various headers can be collapsed. If you hover over, you'll see the triangle icon appear and you can click to toggle to show and hide various levels of detail. In case you are wondering, no, you cannot alter the sort order or arrangement of the sidebar items. You can change the width of the sidebar. All you have to do is hover over its edge until you see the icon change and just click and drag. You'll see the present value balances for each account listed in the sidebar. You'll see a subtotal for each account subtype and you'll see a grandmaster of your total net worth up top. Moving down the sidebar, you'll see a listing for reports. I'm not going to go into any detail at this point because I'm going to cover those later. You'll see a listing for bill reminders. Those are basically scheduled transactions. They're not always have to be bills. And you'll see budgets if you have that set up. Moving to the lower left, if you click on the circular arrow icon, that will download transactions for all online enabled accounts. And clicking on this add an account button will allow you to choose to add another account. Now I'm going to exit out of this new account creation and focus on the accounts that are already set up. If you want to select account and view the register, click on its name in the sidebar. Just single click here. If you double click, it'll spawn a separate window. But for the most part, you're not going to be wanting to have to deal with separate windows. So I'm going to close this out and just go back to the single register. Now for this example, I'm going to select one of my credit card accounts and we'll explore that register in greater detail. At the top of the banner bar you'll see the account name in this case it's Chase Visa 5287. Below that you'll see the branding name from the bank list. Moving over if this is a credit account such as this credit account you can choose to show the credit limit or remaining credit and you'll see the different balances that you can display. If I click on this drop down you can see the view online balance that is the balance actually sent from your bank. You can't edit that. Projected balance includes all scheduled transactions, whether or not they have been paid or unpaid. And view today's balance shows you the current balance, excluding all scheduled transactions that have not been marked as paid. Moving down, you'll see some buttons. One is for transactions. We're this is where most people are going to actually be working with their data. And then you see a button for spending and for income. These are old Category Explorer uh, graphs if you're familiar with Quicken Essentials. But for the most part, most users are going to be in the transactions view. Now let's look at live searching. This is great because it's a quick way to find quick answers. Let's say I want to see how much I spent at Hardee's. Just start typing that in. And I see all the relevant transactions matched. And actually, if I select all the transactions, I can see the total of the upper right. This is really powerful, but at this point, I'm just going to cancel out of this. And I do wish to note that if you wish to search for only a certain column, you can click on the magnifying glass, and you can choose which column you wish to search by. At the top, you'll also see some filters. You can choose to which, like, constrain your dates. You can tr choose to constrain transaction types or whether or not the transaction has been cleared or uncategorized. Play around with them. That's the best way to get the best look and feel form. And no matter what filter you apply, you can always click on reset filters to restore to the default view. Moving downward, there's the toolbar at the lower edge of the screen. 
Most of these items have keyboard shortcuts, so don't worry too much about them. And then if you go over, you can see there's a reconcile icon. You can click on that. Don't worry, if you wish to cancel out, just close the window. And the other thing I wish to point out is the settings window. Click on that. Now that you're within the account settings, you can change the account name, give it a description, change the currency, change the account type, give it a credit limit if it is a credit account, and apply notes, or you can actually specify how far out to look for scheduled transactions. Also down below, you can specify all the online banking information if you have this account set up to download transactions from a bank. Now let's cancel out of this and go look back and look at the register. One thing you'll notice is everything is in a single line now. I know for some older people that uh, they're used to a double line checking register, but that's not really relevant to today's world. So everything is in a single line. This single line certainly makes it easier to display different columns, and it makes it a lot easier to scan your data. Looking at the register, one thing to note is that this blue line separates future transactions from the present transactions. Now let's look at how we can change various columns. I'm going to switch over to my checking account here. And one thing, you can look down at this button here where you can choose which columns you wish to display. But I usually just write or control click on the column header and choose what various columns I wish to show. Let's say I want to show the transfer column. And let's see, I want to choose the check number column. And let's put the reconcile status. We'll put that there. And some of these things aren't in the order that I like. Let's say I want to move the reconcile over there. I can just click and drag to move things where I like them. Some of the columns in this list show up as a light gray. That means that they always have to be displayed and that you cannot hide them. Moreover, some of these fields are data provided by your bank and you cannot actually change the values in those fields. One thing to note is that you can click on any column header to make that the sort key and you can click on it repeatedly to make it sort ascending or descending. For example, let's look at date. We'll click on that. We can have the newest at the top or the newest at the bottom. For one thing, for the running balance to display, you must be sorted by date. Now let's examine what some of these icons mean in the status column. If you see a dark blue icon, that means the transaction was downloaded on your last download attempt. A light blue icon means it was downloaded in the past. A circular hollow icon means that you've marked that as reviewed. You also see some scheduled transactions will have icons here. Some with the clock icon means that it's a scheduled transaction that has not been marked as paid. One with the red exclamation mark means that it's a scheduled transaction that is late. It is important to understand how scheduled transactions actually work. They may appear in the register, but they actually haven't been posted. For example, they show here in light gray. Let's say I want to mark this as paid. I can select the transaction, and if I click on deposited, it'll mark the transaction as paid exactly as is. But let's say something else changes. Let's say the transaction varies. Let's say this I have an interest, and I'll use my first citizen's bank here, but the value varies. So I'm going to double click on it and choose mark as paid. And then I can go in and change the amount as needed. Now that I've covered the status column icons, I'd like to explain the reconcile ones. Basically, it's pretty simple. A simple empty checkbox means the transaction is uncleared. If it's blue with a black check mark, that transaction is marked as cleared. And if it's green circle with a white check mark, that transaction has been reconciled. Wrapping up, I'll point out that the window menu is where you'll see all your different lists, such as the category list or your payee list. You can go in there, and if you need to change something or mark a category as being tax-related, you could do it there. Close this out, and if you go to the Quicken menu, you'll see the preferences. And most of these things are pretty self-explanatory, but I do want to point out that there is a new special option where you can show the category if you have a... Uh, subcategories it'll only show the subcategory name by default if you prefer seeing the long name where you actually see the parent and the sub choose the long name and that pretty much finishes up this brief overview to Quicken 2015 I hope you found it useful and you look forward to seeing some of my other videos that will show how to use Quicken in greater detail I hope you enjoyed it thanks